All right? Hello? And that is what's been hid from the ages. Paul's saying, hey, this was hid. This was what people couldn't understand. And when the Jews found out Jesus came, they said, it can't be right. He was who he was. And as soon as he said, God's my father, they sought to kill him. Wow. And then you'll find out in chapter 8, John's Gospel, chapter 8, they picked up stones to stone him. When he said, what the father spoke, that's what he spoke. What the father taught, that's what he taught. And they said, kill him, quick. And when you start teaching the gospel and telling people that the Savior has come to redeem you, body, soul, and spirit, your whole being, and that Jesus has come to live in your mortal flesh, that we have this treasure in an earthen vessel, Christ in you, the hope of glory, and you begin to express it, people get mad at you and want to kill you. Because you're... you're <laughs> What they say is, you're making yourself like God. <laughs> but you were meant to be in the image of God. And redemption is reconciliation. And reconciliation, God is reconciling you to what should have always been in your life. Christ in you. Wonderful. You know, disease doesn't have a chance. When Christ lives in your mortal flesh, he quickens your mortal flesh. He lives in you. And hey, you can conquer things by the inside, what's in you. That power that brought Jesus out of the tomb, it says in Ephesians, is the same power that's in you and works for you. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is working. You have authority. You have power. You have ability. Not in yourself, but to do the work that God foreordained that you should walk in. Doing his will. And Paul makes it plain. That's what we're about. Doing the will of the Father. Get out of your philosophies, reality. Come down to earth, honey. Christ lives in you, in your mortal flesh. Oh, I'm so glad. You want to know where God is? He lives in me. And he has plenty of room. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Jesus Christ is a good God. Amen. Everything consists by him and for him. And you know, I'm glad. There's things he keeps secret. Do you know, don't ever think that everything's open. There's things, I talk to some people and I just talk, and it, it's private, it's secret. Not everything is open. Paul had tremendous revelation, you know. And he said he'd never declared it. Didn't tell anyone else. I find Christians, they've only got to get a bit of cheese and a funny dream, and they want to tell everyone. You know, Joseph tried that, you know, he came down to breakfast. He poured out his cornflakes and he said to his brothers as he was eating his cornflakes, he said, it's probably, you know, K cereal, so he was slimming. But he said to his brothers, he said, hey, he said, I had this dream. And there were all these sheaves of corn, you see, and you were all bowing down to me in the middle and worshipping me. Said, And a brother said, oh, little brother. We're so glad to know that God gave you that little dream about us worshipping you. 
and they schemed in their minds how they could kill him so it never happened and you remember they took him uh, 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 when he came with the food and his fancy multicolored coat uh, and they got some blood of his sheep and we said well we're going to bow down to you are we and then they found that they could make some money by selling him off so they sold him off and down he went to Egypt see because eating his cornflakes he just had to boast about a dream he'd had wasn't smart but he learnt a good lesson it's very often important not to tell everyone everything I like what my dear friend Benson Ederholzer said if you tell people everything you know they'll be as smart as you <laughs> don't tell them everything Jesus was careful who he told what to okay is that clear yes. you know they, they, you can get hurt by telling people too much I've sat on that seat there next to my wife and I've been sitting there and I've looked out at the congregation and God's spoken to me about people. And you know, sometimes he's told me things about people and I've never said a word about it. I remember one person came to me uh, to see me and he said, um, he started to talk, I said, look, I know. How do you know? God told me. When did he tell you? 12 years ago I told him the point where God to, I could remember it clear as daylight the moment God spoke to me 12 years never said it he said why didn't you tell me if you've known for 12 years why didn't you do something about no it wasn't God's time you say well do you mean you just store it yeah How do you remember? I don't. 